Thank you. As the Rear Admiral of the Coast Guard just said, it is tedious work to clear the wreckage. The Coast Guard is working closely with several salvage organizations, including the Army Corps of Engineers. 7 News Maryland Bureau Chief Brad Bell spoke with the Colonel leading that effort. And Brad, it's going to be a long road to clear the debris before we even get to the rebuilding process. What are they saying about the challenges ahead? Yeah, you know, look, with regard to a timeline, it is a question I have asked the governor a number of times. I've asked others. No one is willing to publicly say what they think the timeline will be. But they are pleased, as you take a look now at the bridge behind me, with what they've been able to do so far. They have cranes out there. They have been able to lift one piece. Another piece is coming up tonight. They do have the temporary sections of the, of the channel open. But what we are hearing from the leader of the Army Corps effort here is that they are finding it is a little bit more challenging than they had hoped it would be. Best team that's working on this. Colonel Este Pinchasen has already had a decorated career. She's been deployed overseas. She's won medals. She holds an advanced degree in engineering from Stanford University. But she's never faced a challenge like this. It's sobering. When you go out there, you see the magnitude and complexity there. And how do you eat an elephant one piece at a time? That's what we're trying to engineer our way out of. Pinchasen commands the Army Corps of Engineers Baltimore District. She led efforts to free a massive cargo ship which ran aground two years ago. And now she is the Army Point person in the Key Bridge Unified Command Center. We speak today before she has to hurry off to a boat tour of the bridge for a visiting admiral and general. Right now we're in the process of getting a better understanding of what the wreckage looks like in the 50 foot channel. It's very deep, it's 50 feet, and it's mangled and cantilevered. And yet, as this video shows, the bridge is already being cut. One section already loaded on a barge. To be four days in and start lifting and picking is just an incredible, incredible feat. And the engineering analysis that's taking place behind the scenes cannot be understated. Every time we lift anything off of the wreckage, we have to go back in and assess what that looks like, how the load shifted, did the wreckage react the way we thought. We have to engineer how we're going to go in and rig, then lift each piece of the wreckage. And it's like peeling back an onion with every layer. We go back in and assess. Despite the challenges, Penchasen says she knows this job, this latest mission, will get done. Slow is smooth and smooth is fast, and that's kind of an army term, but yeah. But it's not going to be easy, and it's going to be a long time. I just, I hope that people understand the in incredible effort that's going into every single lift, every pick. Yeah, and on a personal note, I, I asked her what she thought when she first saw this, and she said, her thoughts actually went to those families, and she thought about her husband and, and other wives at home that had lost their husbands on, on this bridge. And she actually wants the community to know that for her, this is not just a mission that she has been sent to from out of town. This is her home. This is where she's based. This is the port that is the focus of all of her efforts. And so she is working as hard as she possibly can, along with the rest of that unified team, to get this job done done. But again, no timeline with the key bridge. Brad Bell, 7 News. Brad, thank you.